So it's the Parshish Korach. You know, where and when did the rebellion of Korach take place? Is unclear. The mice of the Mesoinanim is Mephorish in the Torah. In Parshish Baloischa, it happened right after the 20th of Eeyore, the second year that he didn't work in the Midbar. The second year, let's say, B'nai Yisrael Meretz Mitzrayim, as soon as they left Sinai. And uh, eventually that place was given the name Kivrei Satava. From Kivrei Satava, they Nosu Lechatzerois. And in Chatzerois, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moshe in the end of Parshish Baloischa. And then it says in the end of Parshish Baloischa that they traveled to Poron, and in the beginning of Parsha Shlach, it says that from Poron, they sent the Meraglim. So where and when these things took place is uh, more or less Mephurish. But the Misa of Korach, where and when it happened, it doesn't say. And there's at least uh, four different opinions. From the fact that uh, it says over here, you know, uh, we can't prove much because we have a klal of Ain. The Ibn Ezra, in the beginning of this week's Parsha, says that this took place way back in Parsha's Bamidbor. As soon as, uh, as soon as Moshe Rabbeinu uh, made the, 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 put the, the Levim instead of the Bechorim and said that the Levim will be Nesunim, Laharoin Ubonov. That's when Koirach and his people rebelled. Azoizok the Ibn Ezra, that was still in Sinai before they left Sinai and went to Kivrei Satav. And it's saying, Mukdim Mukhabatari, the Ramban disagrees. The Ramban says that it actually happened right here. And now, after the Chait Hamaraglan, and the Ramban says, uh, now why? It's, it's uh, strange. I mean, if, if these, uh, the division of classes was already took place a long time ago, why would the rebellion take place now? The Ramban says, Nothing went wrong. Only a few people died. The people loved Moshe Rabbeinu, and they listened to him. If somebody would rebel against Moshe during that time, they would kill him. Therefore, they had to tolerate it, even though they were upset, but they knew that they can't make a machloikis against Moshe Rabbeinu when everybody loves Moshe Rabbeinu so much. The Gzeira wasn't bottled, and the Nesia Kol Hashvotim died by Magayful of Nei Hashem. The Nigzar El Ha'Om that they should die in the Midbar. Oz Hoisa Nefesh Kol Ha'Om Mora. Then everybody was really in a bad state. V'Hoyu Omrim Belibam Ki Avoyu Lahem B'Divrei Moshe Takolis. People were thinking, listen, Moshe Rabbeinu was not the leader that he was meant to be and that he was made out to be. V'Oz Motzo Koyrach Mokoim Lach Lekal Maiso. V'Choshav Ki Yishmu Elav Ha. So he sees the moment. He, he, the, now Moshe Rabbeinu is down. You could also like too that the sending of the Miraglam was the first thing that Moshe Rabbeinu really did on his own. Not in the name of the Rabbeinu Shalom. The Rabbeinu Shalom said, Shlach So it was his own decision and he failed miserably. So uh, this was a time where Kairach could actually uh, say, you know, this is not the only thing that he did on his own. I mean, the, 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 the Levim and the Koyanim, it's all his own thing, and therefore, this was a time for the Machlokes. So the Ramban says it happened after the Meraglim. After the Meraglim, like it appears in the Torah. On the other hand, uh, in Rashi, and on the same hand, actually, in Rashi in this week's Parsha, 
it says on in Pasig Dalit, Vayipoil al Ponov, Zok Trashi me Pneha Machloikis, Shekvar Zebi Yodom Sirchoin Revii. This was the fourth sin. Chotu Beegel, Vayichal Moshe, Bimisoinim, Vayispal al Moshe, Bimiraglim, Vayoim and Moshe al Hashem Vishomu Mitzrayim. So all the other three times that already happened, my Shrabbeinu was mispal, but b'machlokosay shol koyrach nisrash lu yodo. Moshe le ben melech shesorach al oviv, upiyes olav oyav oipam, ushtayin v'sholish kishesorach revies. The fourth time, nisrash lu yedei ho'oyhei v'ahu. Omar ad mosai atriach al ha'melech, shemo lo yekabaloid mimeni. So from Rashi you see also that this happened after the Meraglim, as it appears in the Torah. However, Rashi and Parshas Dvorim, Rashi and Parshas Dvorim in his first shot says not like that. Rashi says on the Pesach, Eila HaDvorim HaShedi BeMoshe El Kol Yisrael BeEva Ayardim BaMidbor BaArovo Moel Suf Bein Poron UBein Toifel VeLovon VeChatzei Rois VeDi Zohov. What's so Rashi explains that all these. Places actually represent chatoim that Klal Yisrael was choyte in these places. And Rashi says, v'chatzerois v'machlot kosoi shel koirach. So according to this, it's a psik tezutras, according to this, the machloikas of koirach took place in chatzerois before they moved on to Poron from where they sent the Meraglim. So it happened before the Meraglim. When exactly did it happen? The Re'eim has a, a suffix in Parshas Dvarim and also in Parshas Shlach. Did it happen in Chatzeros before the Maise Miriam? Or did it happen in Chatzeros after the Maise Miriam? So we have al in four options. Either it happened in, in Sinai, in, in Parshas Bamidbar, or it happened in Chatzeros. It could be before the Maise Miriam. It could be after the Maise Miriam. And it could be that it happened after the Maisa Hamaraglim, after they were in Midbar Poron some time. So, uh, listen, maybe it could be that, you know, Machloikis is timeless. It really doesn't uh, have to do with any particular place or time. And that's what's alluded to in the fact that the Torah doesn't tell us where and when it happened. And that uh, reminds me of something uh, uh, very cute that it says in the Sefer Tevas Goyme from the uh, Prima Godin, he says, Oimrim Halotze, Parsha Zu Yofen Edreshes. Rashi says, Parsha Zu Yofen Edreshes, Dover Be'itoy Matoy, Vishaloi Boino, so Loi No Elidrish. We have a clown, you only say a Dover Be'itoy. Shaloi Boino, so it's not No Elidrish. Be Pesach Dine Sukkis, Oyoi Makipurim, Vikadoyme. If somebody says a Drosh on Pesach about Sukkis, it's, it's a modern. Yeah, the parish of Machlaikis is always good to Darshan. Yeah, so it's always the right time. So, so Mamela, that's that's the shot. Maybe the Torah doesn't even tell us when it happened because it happens all the time. Now, Rashi in the beginning of the parish says on the Pasik, on the Pasik, uh, no, says Vayikach Kora, Vayikach Kora. Ben Yitzar, Ben Kahos, Ben Levi. So Rashi says, Ben Yitzar, Ben Kahos, Ben Levi. Veloi his kir Ben Yaakov. She bikesh racha mimal atzmoi sheloi yi zocher shmoi al mach loi kosom. She nemar uve koholom al teichat kevoide. Rashi explains why is Yaakov Avinu omitted from this line. Ben Levi. We got till Ben Levi and we stop there. So Rashi says that it was because Yaakov was bikish rachem in Malatzmai that his name should not be mentioned in the context of the Machlokes of Korach. It would seem like it would be expected that he should be mentioned. And if not for the fact that he was mispalo not to be mentioned, he would be mentioned. Why would he be mentioned? We don't even understand why we have to have the yichas until Levi, then, then Yitzhar, then Gaz, then Levi. I mean, Mechetesa, that Yaakov Avinu should be mentioned over here. The Orachayim HaKadosh actually uh, asks that. I mean, that it would seem that there was a reason for him, yes, to be mentioned, and he had to be mispalled to be excluded. 
And why is that? You know, Rashi continues, and he says, In case you're wondering, so where was Yaakov Avinu's name yes mentioned? Al-Koyrach. When the Pasek in Divri Ayomim talks about the descendants of Korach who were Meshoyerim in the Beis Amikdosh, over there it says, Ben Av Yosef, Ben Korach, Ben Yitzor, Ben Koz, Ben Levi, Ben Yisro. No. I mean, so what's, the, what's, what's really the meaning of this? And what's the connection? I mean, so over here he's not mentioned. Over there he is mentioned. Why is he mentioned over there? So, you know, the, the, I want to I wanna say like this. The reason that Yaakov Avinu should be mentioned, would have been mentioned in this context, is because the meter of Yaakov Avinu we know is Titan Emes Liyakov. Titan Emes Liyakov, the Pesach says in, uh, in uh, Micha. Yaakov is the meter of Emes. And therefore, there's a mockum to attribute Koyrach's machloikis to the Tchuna San Efesh of Bikush Oemus, that he yarshin from Yaakov Avinu. I mean, what's the basis of machloikis? I mean, when a person is convinced that his truth is the only truth, and that's what he uh, is going to fight for. I mean, and, and he's convinced Talashikul of Trelitz should be put him in hand. Trelitz, Bayas Mali Svarim. Should not need a mezuzah. Kol ha'ida kikulam k'doishim. Um adua tesnasu. And, uh, you know, the truth is not flexible. And therefore, he, uh, he, he fights for it. So why is, why was Yaakov Avinu's tefillin eskabel? That he shouldn't be mentioned. So, Ken Zayin you know, the, the, there's a famous medrash in Parshas Bereshis that talks about the creation of man. It says like this, Amar Ibn Simon, B'shoh Sheboa HaKadosh Baruch Hu Livroi says Adam Harishin, Nasu Malache Ashores, Kitim, Kitim, V'chaburois, Chaburois, Mehem Oimrim, Al Yibore. There were angels that said that man should not be created. Mehem Oimrim, Yibore. Others said he should be created. Hado Diksiv, Chesed, V'emes Nivgoshu, Tzedek, V'sholoim Noshoku. And, that, and the Medrash goes on to explain, Chesed Omar Yibore, Shugaymo Chasodim. The Midas HaChesed, the angels of Chesed said, man should be created because he's kind. He's a Goymo Chasodim. The Emes Omar Al Yibore, Shekulo Shkore. Man is full of falsehoods. He shouldn't be created. Tzedek Omar Yibore, Shuoi Se Tzedokos. Sholem Omar Al Yibore, the Kulei Ktote. Man is all about the Heipach of Sholem. Man is all about Ktoto. How would you translate Ktoto? Listen, you know, dispute. Huh? dispute. Huh? Maybe dispute. 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 But dispute doesn't Squabbling. have to be negative. It's like feuding. I mean, it's it's more about a feud than about a dispute. A yeah. dispute could be an argument. But he's cool like Ktoto. Not al emes Lawrence. How did Akadish Borhu create man? He took the truth and he threw it to the ground. Hadodiksiv, this is what the Pasuk in Daniel says, Vatashlech Emes Arzo. No, so the Malach Yashor said, What are you uh, uh, insulting? The Taxis al Tixi Yashilko. I mean, Emes is something that represents you, and you're being Mashlechit Lo Oretz. Tala Emes Mena Oretz. Hadodiksiv, Emes Me Eretz Titzmach. The Pasuk says until him that the truth will sprout from the ground. I mean, obviously this medrash is uh, Sisrei Torah, but, but the, 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 there's a very simple question over here. There was two against two. Chesed and Tzedek said Yibore, and Emes and Sholem said Al Yibore. But he only, he only says that he threw the Emes away. The Sholem is still here, and the Sholem says Al Yibore, so how was man created? So the Yafei Toyar says that once he dropped the Emes, so the Sholoim is Chad Keneget Tre, and his bottle Chad Betre. So the Tre are Tzedek, 
and chesed that say yibare. Now there's only the shalom left that says al yibare. So we don't have to take into account what the shalom says. But lefize, I mean, he could have done the same thing by getting rid of the shalom. He could have been mashlich the shalom arzo. And then the emes would be a chad b'mokim trey, and man would be created. So you know that in the uh, hakdama of the Ktsay Sachoshin, he explains the Indian of Hishlech Emes Arzo. He says that there are two types of truth. There's absolute truth and there's relative truth. And he says that man cannot be created on the level of absolute truth because man is not capable of accessing absolute truth. Whereas, whereas Hishlech Emes Arza was Mechadish, was Mechadish, that the Emes doesn't have to be the absolute Emes. The Emes is what's perceived by humans as truth. That is the truth that we go by. And therefore, man could be created with the Emes of Hishlech Emes Arza. The Ketzei Sachoshin has a beautiful arichis over there about Chidush Torah being Emes, that they don't have to be absolutely emes. And, 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 and it becomes Torah as long as, that's, as it's emes to the one that's being mechadish, the chidush. In any case, I want to say, Avada this has parameters. I mean, it's not the pshat that there's no absolute truth. We just are saying that within the parameters, there's room for different shades of truth, different shades of truth. And now the thing is like this. The, the Sholem said al yibare, because it's kulay ktata. What do you mean it's kulay ktata? Why is man kulay ktata? That's because each one thinks my truth is the only truth. That's the aside of the ktata. But when, when we deal with emes as something that's my truth could be truth, true to me, and your truth could be true to you. We recognize that kishem she'ein partzufehem doimin ze lo ze kach ein dey oiseihen shavois. Then, then, a machloikis is not a ktota. We could have an argument, but it's not a dispute. We could have an argument, but it's not a feud. Then it's no longer kula ktota. So the hishlich emes arza accomplished that man is no longer kulay ktoto, because in the world of the relative truth, we could get along when I understand that what's true to me is not necessarily true to you. You know, they say that uh, there was a vision of the Rebbe, the Avas Yisro. He died in 1937. He said that, he said in Yiddish, it's not so gishmak maybe in English, but he said that every tzaddik, the Rebbe Yishalom puts into his mind that his way is the only way. But he said, if the tzaddik is also a chacham, then he knows that just like the Rabbi Nishalom put into his mind, the machshava that his way is the only way, he also put into the other tzaddik's mind that his way is the only way. So when we recognize the hishlich emes arzo, then it's no longer kuloi ktota. And, and you see that, that the Gemara, the Emes, uh, so, so the Machloik is, is not Sois of the Sholem, and therefore, and therefore man could be created. We see the Gemara says about the Machloik is of Beishama and Basil, the Gemara says in the end of the first parak of Yavamis, the Gemara says that, be, the Mishnah says that Beishama and Basil's Machloik is, is the antithesis to the Machloik of Korach Vadosu. And 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 machloek is l'shem shomayim soifal l'hiskayim, meaning that both sides have an eternal kiyum. The Gemara says about the machloek of b'sham and b'silu ha emes v'hasholim ahavu. So you see that emes and sholim doesn't have to be a steer, because in the in the world of machloek is b'sham and b'silu, they understand that their position is what's right to them, and their position is what's right to them. So it's a emes v'hasholim ahovu. So, so, so the thing is like this. It could be, it could be, I'm just saying, hishlech emes arza, but Korach, who didn't recognize the hishlech emes arza, he belongs 
belongs beneath the Arzo, where the MS, where the relative MS exists. In any case, just like Yaakov Avinu is the Mida of Emes, Titan Emes Liyakov, we also know that Yaakov Avinu is the Mida of Tiferes. You know, Titan Emes Liyakov, Chesed Lavram, Avram Avinu is the Mida of Chesed. Yitzchok is the Mida of Gvura. And Chesed and Gvura are two opposites. And the Mida of Yaakov, which is Tiferes, is the, is which synthesizes Chesed with Gvura. So you see that Yaakov's emes is not is the emes of Hishlech emes Arzo. It's the emes that's created dafke by synthesizing opposites, by elu ve'elu divrei Elohim chayim, and 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 that's why that's why Yaakov Avinu still is neskabel because Korach he represents emes, but that's the wrong the wrong type of emes. It's not the emes liyakov. The emes liyakov is the emes of Tiferes, which recognizes <laughs> the other emes, whereas Kerech's emes is not the emes of Yaakov, and therefore Yaakov is not being mentioned over here. But where is he mentioned? He's mentioned al aduchon, because you know, what's the, what's the, 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 the B'nai Kerech are the Meshoirim. And it, it, it might be that that's a tikkun for the Chet Korach, because what's a Meshoire? Shira is really about combining different notes and different tones, and each one has its unique sound, but it doesn't stand on its own. It's dafke the Tziruf and the Mizug and the Chibur between the various tones that makes the beautiful music. Yeah, that's, that's, that is the meat of Teferis. The Ramak says Teferis is the music of different colors, he says, which creates beauty. He says something that's one dimensional can't be beautiful. And beauty is the combination of various colors. And Alderach said, music is the combination of the various tones. And therefore, Al Haduchen, that's where Yaakov Avinu is mentioned, Al Koirach, because Al Haduchen, that's the Tikkun, that's the Emes in the true form. Uh, in Yaakov's form, the emes of Hishlich, emes Arzo. Now, you know, it's also like the Gemara in the end of Masechtas Megillah. There's a Gemara in the end of Masechtas Megillah where it says, V'omer of Shvatye, Omer of Yoichene, Kol ha-koyre b'loi ne'ime, v'shoyne b'loi zimra. Literally means he learns without a nigan, without a tune. All of ha-kos of Oymer, v'gam ani nosati lochem chukim, he doesn't, he can't carry a tune. That posse concludes. He's chayiv misa because he can't carry a tune. Because he's chayiv misa because he so it's the Elo, it's the Chore, it's a totally new Pshat. We didn't help Reb Shvat Yom Reb Yoichen. What's the Pshat with Reb Shvat Yom Reb Yoichen who said, Kol HaShoyne Beloi Zimra. All of our Kosovo Emes. And my father said that we're really reinterpreting the statement of Reb Shvat Yom Reb Yoichen. That we're saying, Shnei Talmid Rechom She'ein Man'im Im Zelo Zeh Bahalochem. That Shnei Talmid Rechom Adorim Birachas should be Man'im Zeh Ezeh Bahalochem. What does it mean to be Man'im, to sweeten each other Bahalochem? If you understand the secret of music, then you understand that you're playing one note and he's playing another note, and together the, you create the symphony. And therefore, we're saying that it's chukim loy toivim, it's chukim loy toivim, shoinabaloy zimra, somebody that learns without understanding that learning has the soil of zimra. Yeah, that's the shnei talmi dechachomim she'eno man imim ze lo ze bahalochit. So you know the k'toris appears twice in this parsha. The first time, so the Ktoris kills. The second time, So 
does the Ketores bring life or does it bring death? So, you know, Ketores is a lotion of Kesher, like Bechat Ketir, Kotar is a lotion of tying. Uh, Ketores really has Yud Aleph Same Monim. So the Reach Ketores, the Reach Ketores really brings together various smells, different, unique smells. The Reach Ketores is created by the combination of the smells of the various samemonim. Im chisar achas mikol samoneo, chay of misa, and that's even the chelbeno, which represents the paisha Yisro. So the, 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 the korach v'adosoy, who doesn't understand the secret of hishlech emes arzo, yeah, who, whose truth is one dimensional, and, it's, and, 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 they, and, and they don't understand that the truth is really created by the different shades and colors and different smells and different sounds. So the Ketores wipes them out. Whereas the rest of Klal Yisrael is, 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 is given life by the Ketores because the Ketores is really our source of life. The Ketores that brings out the idea that, you know, Elu, the Elu, Divrei Elohim Chaim, that Mini, it's interesting that you know Rashi brings that 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 where did Moshe Rabbeinu learn the secret of Ketores? He learned the Malach Amovis gave it to him when Moshe Rabbeinu was all alamorim to receive the Torah, and the Malachi Ashur said, and then Moshe Rabbeinu defended the giving of the Torah to humans, and then. The Malachi Asharis were moide, and they said, Hashem Ohad Hashem Chabuchol Oretz, as the Gemara says, that they even gave him Atonis, and the Malach HaMovis gave him the Matona of Ketores, that that's what's Oitzer Magefer. So, you know, the giving of Torah to humans, the Ketos HaChoshin, and that shtickle about Hishlech Emes Arzo explains that that's the whole idea of Matan Torah, that Torah is decided by what's true to us and not by the absolute truth. And Mamela, this is where the Ketores is given to Moshe Rabbeinu, and, 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 and that becomes our source of life.